Okay, last pass. I ended up clear at the other end of the job. That's what it looks like. Uh, we cannot haul enough water on it to really do it justice. They're just, there isn't enough water out here. We brought the tanker. Uh, you just beat it to dust before you get it wet. It did rain back that way on a pretty good section of it last night this morning got more black clouds in the sky but they're only calling for a 20 percent and a little there so it's really not enough to do anything but that's a long old rough road so i think what i'm gonna do is this is called the arco minidoka road i'm gonna go up here and this will intersect with the piece that we cindered uh, two years ago. So I'm gonna go that way, I'm gonna go back, uh, get the four-wheeler, and I'm gonna come back around and check exactly how long this piece of road was. The sign says Rock Lake's 15 miles, which puts you back at the junction. Uh, I want to see if that's really right or not because on their map it shows it being 13 and uh, Anyway, I just want to find out so I'm gonna take this road. I don't think it's too many miles up to that other one. I Guess we'll find out but once I hit that cinder road I can haul the mail because it's a good Anderson construction built road so that baby's a 50 mile an hour if I can get the old G up to 50. Oh, anyway, I wish I was done done with this, but I've got, uh, oh, I see a headlight up there. Somebody's coming. A couple of motorcycles, it looks like. But I've got another four miles to do. And uh, I'm going to have to move a little over 20 miles with the grader to get to it. Now there's something interesting. That looks like that takes water. Just takes water and takes water. When I first saw that, and there's one on the other side, I kind of thought, well, did they dig the dirt out of there? But I don't think so. I think that just must naturally take the runoff, and it's taking all the water with it or I mean the, all the dirt with it and down the crack okay it says we're crossing the Great Rift what is the Great Rift it's a big crack in the ground it looks like it goes out there huh. somebody tell me what the Great Rift is I'm uh, getting to think I made a wrong turn at Albuquerque. <laughs> I gotta stand up in here. This road's so rough I can't sit in the seat. It's awful. Anyway, this was a bad choice. But I wanted to see what this road was like. We were thinking about hauling water around this way, but I can see there's no way in hell you'd haul water around on this road. This is just plum awful. Oh, looky there. I didn't take a wrong turn. Here we are. So this is uh, Coffee Point Well, 18 miles. Yeah, I believe that. This is the end of the road we cindered two years ago. Doesn't look like it gets much use. It's pretty weedy. Geez, I had a cold front or something move through. Anyway, I had to shut the door. It was like a hurricane. So I guess it's time to open the door up. It's kind of a hot box in here. Oh, it's another awesome day on the beach.
Bobby, uh, Lamb Job. We're out of here. Moving uh, over to a uh, four mile section way over there I gotta do. I hope to pretty much knock most of that out today, maybe finish up Friday. And then we're done and hopefully on to some bigger and better projects. Uh, this has been fun out here. It's like Jake said, he said, uh, guy only wants to do this about once every two years, but it's work. I got four miles of this road to crown and ditch. And that's our water source. That's called the pack saddle well. But there's no, there's not hardly any water in the tanks and there's no generator there. So boys are going to try to figure out who to talk to to see if we can get water there. Worst case, we'll have to haul it from Coffee Point, which is seven miles away. Um, so new landscape. I see they got some water tanks up there but jake said there's no well so he's wondering if they uh, truck it up there and fill those tanks and then he said there's an underground water line and down in a lower area there's some water troughs um so i don't know what the deal is there but so anyway four miles left uh all we do is clean this up crown and ditch it water it and roll it and then we're done. Uh, Matt and Jake have gone. They've gone to go get the roller. Matt's going to drive the roller over here. A uh, 14-mile trip on the roller. So he's going to be gone for a couple hours. Uh, that's quicker than going and getting the low boy and hauling it over here. So poor people have poor ways, I guess.
Guess I should have called the rancher's dig line. <laughs> so apparently they've plowed a water line in here. There's a tank down there, so I'm assuming this line goes all the way up there to those tanks. So how many more times am I going to hit it? Balls. Okay, so this is kind of interesting here. Um, usually when something burns, it's in a concentrated spot. But it starts clear back there. And then comes up through here. And there's some along the bank right there. But it's deep. So... What in the world would you guess this was from? Or is this uh, like somebody's motor oil, hydraulic oil or something they spilled on? I don't know what it is. Kind of interesting. It's not a campfire. And I don't know what they'd have, you know, what would have burned here to make that much debris. Morning everybody. Yeah, that's a super dodge over there island. It's kind of chilly this morning But I want to show you this is like 530 in the morning Not a car in sight. Well, oh, there's one down there It's just Blacker than the inside of a cow Hey got some stuff going out um, Got a hat going to Adam Newsom. Oh dropped that one if I can read these in the dark, let me turn it around here so I can see it. Adam Newsom from Concord, North Carolina. Uh, I think this is a filthy horse shirt going to Robert Brown out of that Portland, Tennessee. Thank you, Robert. And a couple of calendars going to Robert two in Tennessee thank you uh, and then one more box oh. uh, got a couple of charcoal hats going to Eric Leach from Perry Oklahoma oh and a pile of stinking bills guess what I had to pay I had to pay for that four-wheeler this month ain't that great <laughs> <laughs> you guys have an awesome day, man. Come on, buddy. You can beat me. Oh, you're giving up already? Darn it. You're giving up. <laughs> oh, that dog loves to chase me in the morning. Just for fun. <laughs> uh, so I had to stop this morning and show you this Huber. So I used to have one just like this. I had a... D1400, it had a 220 Cummins. That wasn't the original motor, but the original Cummins threw a rod, so they put this 220 Cummins in it. This one's a four-cylinder Detroit. Now, I know the guy that used to own this grader. I have run this thing before, and what it does is it just screams like crazy, and then you put the blade in the ground and all of a sudden it just winds clear to the nuts and slows down to a crawl anyway uh not a real good grader for heavy cutting apparently they got a problem with it because they were going like walking speed alongside the road and then they just kind of parked it here but i liked my huber because of the way the saddle indexes the whole the arms everything come around and you could run that moldboard out and run the bottom out two feet past the tires. You could cut an inverted slope if you wanted to. Miserable to get parts for, but it was a pretty good blade other than it didn't articulate. No diff unlock, so that was tough. But Huber. <laughs> Heck, Huber had, I think they had hydraulics for cat. I think everybody had hydraulics for cat. Why does cat always fight the trend? 
<laughs> they must they must have been technology laggards like me back in the day. <laughs> hey, looky there. Twin turbos. Oh, no, just a single. That was such a good idea. Two turbos. Double trouble. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm probably taking off some guys that love twin turbos. Oh, awesome. Little teeny motor. She's got all the goodies. She's got def. She's got a catalytic converter and the afterburner. You know, the one cool thing I really like that Cat did was they invented the hydraulic, well, they didn't really invent it, but they're using the hydraulic drive fan. I think that is an awesome idea. My old nine could really benefit from that, especially when it's cold. No reason to run the fan when she's cold, plus it sucks a lot of horsepower. That's a good idea. Way to go, Cat. I got to give it to the engineers that did that. Hey, uh, my oil filler post uh, really pissed off an engineer. He was mad. He called me a dumb F. Told me to go get a funnel. Well, this just proves my point that some engineers don't get it. I don't want to go get a funnel. I don't want to have to deal with that dirty mess. I don't want to be putting dirt in my motor. That right there is an awesome filler cap. So, I'm sorry I offended your feelings, but you do got to admit sometimes engineers ain't mechanics. I think they should, I think all engineers should have to go out in the field and work on some of the stuff they design, because I really, really think that would help. Or better yet, when they do the service manuals and that, and they show how to remove things and work on them and all that. Those are the guys that should be doing that while the photogra photographer is taking pictures to put them in the service manual. Oh, wait a minute. They don't do that anymore either. <laughs> that apparently costs too much money. So, always banging engineers. I'm always a banging them. So, this is the kind of crap I have to deal with. Rocks that size, just everywhere and because this is so powdery dry and there's no water to properly build a road like you would in construction normal real construction you can't get rid of these because uh, you take all the dirt with it you can't separate them some of the bigger ones I can I'll push off to the side but <sighs> This is kind of the worst thing you can do to a grader. Um, if it's frustrating as hell because if you put enough money in to do it proper and deal with all this and drive in first gear and be careful, you're never going to get the job. And I guess the really frustrating part is I go look at what other people have done out here nobody cuts a ditch if there's any rock hell even if there isn't any rock they just go oh, i can't cut it there's rock and they they must go okay but as many times as i've done this and cut ditches for them you'd think they'd go well this guy does it why can't you we're gonna water this and roll it and get be done with this it does it looks like shit. i just be honest with you. To me, this looks like shit. But there's not a damn thing in the world you can do with it. And there's not enough water out here to properly water it and blade it around. If I add the water and enough money into it to haul that water in and process this and get it nice and wet, yeah, I can get rid of the rocks. I've done it before if you've got the moisture and this stuff doesn't you have to process it and process it water it windrow it roll it back and forth to get the moisture in it and it's really time consuming and expensive and you, you just can't there's no water available to do that it's just not cost effective uh, by the time you go get water put it down process it come back with another load 
it's just bone dry again. This the evaporation rate out here is so incredible, and the wind blows. And uh, when it it can rain out here, I mean, it can rain and rain and rain, and then an hour later, the moisture is just it's just gone. And when you start rolling it around with moisture in it, then uh, what happens is uh, it just dries it out and you're back to powder. You, you can't get enough water on it. So we have to do this. It goes through the winter, soaks it up really good, and settles it. I don't know. It's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating not to be able to do a really good job at I try, try the best I can, but I can't make cake out of shit. So sometimes you get these rocks that are so big and sharp and all they do is skid through this powder and you can't get rid of them. And so I have to get out of the grater and I have to throw these big dogs out to try to regrade this and make it smooth. <laughs> sucks handwork can you believe that i need that ryan chrisman he can cut pennies off maybe he can come out here and show me how to get these out <laughs> it's a hurricane this is all straight rock through here there's just really nothing i can do with it it is what it is tell it ain't anymore There's a pretty good reason why this is about two feet lower than the original ground. Wind, people driving on it. This, this road's probably been here a hundred years. Standing here, driving down, looking, trying to figure out where I could make a cutout ditch to drain water in here, but there is no place. There's no way to get it out. So, I bet this is a mud hole come spring. Well, good morning. It is a chilly one, too. It's 41 degrees out here this morning. Brrr. I don't think it's going to be very warm today. Can't remember what they said it would get up to. Maybe in the 70s, close to 80. I'm not sure. Smoky, cloudy, overcast. Yeah, it's not going to get real warm. So what's Jeffrey up to today? Well, we're going to go fill the water tankers up and water that last four miles of road. Boy, it is cold, but man, is it nice and quiet this morning? Beautiful view of the mountains over there. Here, I'll just shut up and let you listen to the quiet. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> Let's go get the super Kenny going. check for snakes of course they'd be asleep they wouldn't be able to move they'd be quite lethargic this morning key on oh, turn the ac off ac I off we found one. radio off contact oil pressure let's go get the little truck going Okay, this is the truck that scares me because it's old and full of holes and whatever else. <laughs> and I gotta stick my hand in here and get the key. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. <laughs> I shouldn't have shown you that. Never mind. Oh. Okay. So, put the classic GM key in the slot. Turn it to uh, rocket boosters engaged and go with throttle up, Houston. Ooh. And she didn't blow up. And 
when do we have oil pressure? Oh, there it is. We have oil pressure. Jimmies are cool. They don't have any oil pressure when the oil gets hot, but they have plenty when it's cold. So I put down water this morning on this four mile stretch of road. Uh, this one I don't think is going to be as bad as the 11 mile stretch. It's a uh, different material over here. It looks like it's got a lot more clay and not near as much sand. Now there is one spot up here that looks pretty sandy, but it's just a short section. That other road was like mile after mile of nothing but sand. But we got nice overcast skies. It's quite cool this morning, so we're not going to be losing a lot to evaporation. So I'm crawling along here in uh, basically second gear first and over, low and over, about 1100 RPM, not quite five miles an hour. We'll see how far this load goes. Okay, so I'm back for load number two. Uh, because it's so cool today, uh, it greased things up pretty good. Matt's probably not going to be able to roll for an hour or better. Jake's over dumping his load so here we go from one extreme to another but I I would much rather have cool weather and greasy mud to deal with than I would uh, it evaporating faster than I can put it down so I think I don't know what the capacity is on these tanks. Oh, there went Mr. Rabbit. I have no idea what these hold. So I imagine after this load and Jake gets another one, there's not going to be much left. But between me getting one more and Jake one more, we should be able to reach the end of the job. Oh, there's another rabbit. That scared the crap out of me. I shouldn't be scared because if there was any snakes... They wouldn't be able to move this morning at all. It's so chilly. Everything startles me. <laughs> like a little girl. Ah! <laughs> oh. So I want to show you what these guys have to put up with out here. So you've got, looks like one, two, three, four, five pretty good size dents in the tank uh, looks like that one up there I don't know if it penetrated or almost did and then you got uh, so there's one two three four five there then a small one six seven eight other ones I'm looking forward to the day that they can build a robot and he looks like Buster Scruggs I'm Buster Buster Scruggs Buster Scruggs and uh, when, when they shoot at your stuff, the robot shoots back. See, there's some other round dents in it here. Like they've shot, I don't know. This one's definitely a bullet. It's got a dent in there. That, that's a pretty heavy duty tank. But still, why do you want to shoot stuff in people's property? Like I said, a, a Buster Scruggs robot would be awesome. <laughs> so I don't know if that rusted out right there or if that's a bullet hole. But it looks like they put a dowel, just a wooden dowel in it to fix that one. I'd guess it might be a bullet hole because you've got a dent here one here 
this tank is kind of shielded from the other one on you know the side of it but from here it's not so they drive down the road and stick a pistol out and just start shooting like jackasses